Today I'll be showing you how to change layouts in Construct. Now there's a lot of different ways you can do this, but I'll be showing you the way that I think works the best. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I'm in Construct now and I have this project open called Change Layout Tutorial that I've made. I will leave a link in the description below if you'd like to download it and follow along. So what we want to do is when the player reaches the end of this level, we want to send him to the beginning of level two. Let's go ahead and get that set up. We need to go to the end of level one and we will right click and click insert new object and we're going to insert a sprite and down here let's name the sprite level changer then we'll left click and up here I'll click resize and just resize this to like 32 by 32 and I'm also going to give this a color I'll just make it pink and this is going to be what the player collides with that tells the game to send the player to the next level. So we don't actually want to see this pink box in our game. So what we'll do is come over to the properties and on the initial visibility we will set invisible. Now only we can see it when we're editing our game. So now all we need to do is tell the logic that when the player collides with this pink box to send him to level two. So we'll go into our level one events and we'll right click and add a group and we'll call the group go to level two. And then we'll right click that and go to add sub event and we'll say player on collision with another object and then it's going to ask us which object and we want the level changer so we'll click done so the event is when the player collides with the level changer and then the action is going to be system go to layout and then we'll select level 2 and click done pretty simple right well, there's a few problems. The first problem is that the game is not going to know where to put the player once you get to level two. It would send me to level two, but it would have no idea where to place the player. So what we're going to do is create some global variables that will help us place the player in the right spot. And to do that, the first thing I'm going to do is go over here to the event sheets and I'm going to right click and add event sheet and I'm going to name it universal events. And this is where I'm going to keep our global variables. So I'll right click and select add global variable and we're going to call this one X. POS, which stands for X position, and the default settings here are fine. We'll click OK. Then we'll right click again and add another global variable, and this one will be called Y POS for Y position. We'll click OK. And now, with our global variables set up, what we need to do is go into level one and find our player and press control X to cut him out and then we'll go to level 2 and press control V to paste him and under layer I just want to make sure that he is in the player layer so you'll see that it gives his position here his X position is 128 and the Y position is 544 now we need to set our global variables that we made to those coordinates. So in the level one events, go back to where we had the on collision with level changer. We'll add another action. We'll go to system and under global and local variables, we'll select set value. And we want to set our X position to 128. And then we'll add another action. 
system set value y position to 544. Now we just need to tell the game that on the start of level 2 to set the player's position to these coordinates. And to do that, I'm going to go back into our universal event sheet. I'm going to right click and add a new group. And I'm going to call this start of layout. Then we'll right click start of layout and add a sub event. And we'll select system and scroll down to on start of layout. Now for the action, we want to set our player and then scroll down to set position. And we're going to set his position to the global variables that we made. So we'll set his X position to X POS. And then we'll set his Y position to Y POS. Then we'll select done. Now on the start of the layout, it will set the player's position to the global variables that we defined when we collided with the level changer. Now all we need to do is go into our level two events, right click and include event sheet. And we want to include our universal events. And you'll see it appear at the top and now the start of layout event we just made is included in our level 2 event sheet. So now I'll go back into level 2 and cut our player out again and place him back in level 1 and I'll go ahead and put him over at the end. About right there will be fine. Now the last thing we need to do is go up here with our player selected and under global the drop down box we want to select yes. And what this does is it makes the player a global object which means he won't be destroyed at the end of the layout. So when he collides with the pink level changer he will carry over into level 2. So now let's just give it a test and make sure it works. This is where the level changer is, but it's invisible. So once I run into it, it sends me to level two and places me at the right X and Y position that we defined in our global variables. Now, what if I wanted to go back into level one well, we don't have our level changer object here, and we don't have the coordinates set up to know where to place him. So what we can do really quickly is first of all, we'll grab our pink level changer and hit control C to copy. And then we can hit control V to paste it in level two. And then we can go into our level one events and copy this group we made, the go to level 2 group, and paste that in the level 2 event sheet. Now construct names things incrementally, so if you have something with the same name it's going to add a number to the end of it. And we don't want this to say go to level 3, we want it to say go to level 1. So we can just right click to edit and change that to go to level one and then also change the system to go to level one. Now we just need the X and Y coordinates of where the player will start when he comes back into the level. Let's say when he comes back in we want him to spawn about right here. Well here again are his X and Y positions we just need to plug these numbers into our global variables. So we'll set the X position to 6272 and we'll set the Y position to 576. And then the final 
thing we need to do is always be sure to include the universal event sheet. Otherwise, it will not know to set the player's position to the global variables here. So now we can just give this a test. Now notice that our player spawned all the way over here in the corner. And I'll explain why in just a minute. So here we are at the end of the level and we should be able to cross into level 2 and then back over into level 1. Now why did it start the player at the top corner of the layout? It started him right here at the 0, 0 position. And the reason why is because in our universal events that we included, these values are 0 and 0. So we would need to change these to where the player is actually going to start. So let's say we wanted to start our player right here. We would need to plug in these X and Y values as the default values of our global variables. And just to make things a little less confusing, I'm going to move the X position variable to the top. So now we can double click on the X position and change it to where we want our player to start, which is 6112 in this case. And the Y position is 576. Now if we hit play, our player will start at those coordinates instead of way over at the other end of the level. Okay, that wraps up this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and please subscribe. It really helps me out a lot. And I will see you next time.